Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about matrices. So a matrix is just an array of arrays. So let's start off by creating an integer array. To create an integer array, we usually do int with the bracket and then arr for array equals new int and then we would give it a size like three. That's how we declare an integer array but a matrix is an array of arrays so how we can do that is by just adding another set of brackets and over here we'd have to put the size so let's do four so with the new keyword everything is set to a zero so how can we print these values out well we could try four int i equals zero i less than array dot length plus plus then we could do system dot out dot printf percent d and then we would do array at i so we get an underline here array at i it's this invalid type int bracket for percent d percent d is int but array at i is type int bracket, which doesn't work. So array at i will give us an array because it's an array of arrays. Array at i will be an array. So in order to get the integer value, we have to put the arrays index, the arrays array index. So that would look like we would need a second we would need a second set of brackets, which means we need a second loop to loop through the inner part. So we can do for int j equals zero, j less than er at i dot length in j plus plus. So what we're doing here is array has or array has a length and array's length is three because there are three arrays in ARR but array at i dot length is telling us okay we know that array has arrays in it so inside the array at zero because the first one will be zero so array at zero array at zero's length is four because the array at zero, that the unhighlighted section is four. We want the loop limit to be four. So here we will be able to print out the zero because the new keyword sets everything to zero. And over here, we want int i and j. We want the j part here as well. If we try to save this and try to run this, we should get a bunch of zeros. Oh, and also let me put in another set of brackets here so we can we can also uh, put in a line separator over here so we can see each row and column of it. So I'll do a system.out.print line with nothing in it so we get that new line. So if we save and run this, we should be able to see the rows and columns. So we do see three, the three rows from here. These are the three rows from here. And each row has four zeros in it. Each row has four zeros in it. So this is our three by four matrix. And since it's not an array anymore, I'll call this matrix and I'll replace matrix everywhere that it's used. So now we have a matrix of three by four. So this gives us a rectangular matrix, but we can have something called a jagged matrix where we can have each row of a different size. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's very similar to how we can create arrays based on the curly brace notation we can also create jagged matrices based on the curly brace notation as well we just have curly braces inside of curly braces 
So maybe in the first one we want 1 and 2, in the next one we want 4, 5, 6, and maybe in this one we just want 8. So how will this affect our matrix loop? So we have an array of arrays again, same thing. So our first one will be our 1, 2, and 3. So we have, so this one is going to be 3, I'll write that as a comment. There are still 3 here. But matrix at i dot length is going to be different for each one because matrix at zero's length is two, matrix at one's length is three, and matrix at two's length is one. So this will be different for each. So if we print these out, we should see one row with one, two, the second row is four, five, six, and the third row is eight. So let's run this. And we get that result, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. These are called jagged matrices because they all don't have the same size. A regular matrix is what we had before. So let's say we want to go back and go back to our regular matrix. New int. Let's do 10 and 10. Let's try to create a multiplication table. So to create a multiplication table, we want the ones times table to the tens times table. We don't want a zero times table because zero times anything is zero. So how do we do this? Well, we have our loop set up properly. We want to loop through every index of our matrix. So we want to assign the matrix the matrix at i, j. This is the matrix. So at first it's going to be 0 and 0, but we're going to be going through this second loop more often than the first loop. So it's going to be 0, 0, then 0, 1, 0, 2, all up until we get to 0, 9. And then when we get to 0, 9, then we're going to stop this loop and go into this loop and increment this one. So now this one will be one. So it'll be one, and then this goes back to zero. One, zero, one, 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 two, one, three. And then we go to one, nine, and then two, zero, two, one, two, two, and so on. So that's how we're going to be filling up our multiplication table. Now, how do we actually put in the calculation? We can't just do i times j because that will give us 0 times 0 as the first one. We want to do 1 times 1 for the first one. So to get the 1 times 1 value, we'll just have i plus 1 times j plus 1. What this will give us is 1, 1, and then 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and we'll multiply those so we should get the multiplication table from 1 times 1 to 10 times 10. Now how do we print this out? So if we do import java.util.arrays, we can only print arrays from there, but to print a matrix there's a function called deep to string. We can do system.out.printf percent s and we can do we print out arrays dot deep to string and we want the matrix. The matrix is the deep to string we want to print out. But if we print this out, we'll just get one line. All the values in one line like we see right here so instead of doing this we'll actually have to if we want to see it better we'll just have to use arrays dot two string instead of deep two string so we can't just do two string because that won't give us the matrix we'll have to do matrix at i because now we have an array before we had an array of arrays but we just want an array right now so what we can do is we can create another loop for uh, int 
i equals zero, i less than matrix dot length and i plus plus. We could do that and we could run it and we would see a 10 by 10 multiplication table. So we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. We get the ones table here, the twos, threes, fours, five, six, seven, and so on. We get each multiplication table, but we don't have to rewrite the loop here. We can actually, instead of that, we can just put this, we can just put this at the end over here. Because by the end of this loop, that row is already filled. If we have 0 and we loop through the J, so it'll be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, all the way up until 0, 9, we fill in all those values up to 0, 9. So then once all those values are filled in, we can print out the row once it's done being filled in. So if we save this and run it, we should get the same result. And we do get the same result. So we fill in the values of the first row, and then we print it out. Then we fill in the values of the second row, and then we print it out. Same thing with the third row, fill in the values, then print it out. So this loop is printing, or this loop is filling in the values. And this is printing out that row that we just filled in. And that's how that works. In the next video, I will do another example of matrices.